What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the NS Builders Podcast. This week, I have Mike Hume, my longest employee. Uh, started at, as a carpenter here at NS Builders and has worked his way up into a project manager. Uh, master of all, I, I, I would say. Uh, Mike, what's up, dude? How are you? Good. Good. Hanging in there. Yeah? Having fun. Having fun? Always. We. Uh, how long? You've been with us... It's a little over four years. Yeah, now. a little over four. I yeah, think. It was like December uh, twenty sixteen, right? Gosh, I guess. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, um, and it's funny. I the you know I want to just go backwards a little bit here. I remember it as I think I had met you at JLC, yeah. and then I think you had commented on something on Instagram, and I said, "Hey, when are you going to send me your resume?" Yeah, it was actually I think it was when you bought the first van. Because you had the big box truck before, and then you bought the first van. I'm like, hey, you bought me a van. <laughs> it's just like, it just started a conversation. It was like, oh, all right. Yeah, it, it started it as joke. like this, yeah, exactly, yeah. A, a joke. And we, it, I think at the time, we were working on 8th Street Reno yeah. uh, with Mary and Amy, and you jumped in, and then, I mean, the rest is history. So fast forward four years plus, it's a very different company now. Yeah. Um, but that's that's what I want to talk about is you know what what are we striving for and I know you know I know what I want and I know what I'm striving for as as a um, as a person and you know in turn what you know that translates to the business but I'm I want to ask you that question what you know as we grow what are you the most excited about well I guess with everything that we're doing it's always like pushing the envelope and always constantly trying to improve on everything that we do doesn't matter if it's you know i guess we never look at a set of plans and go well this is what's drawn this is what we're building we are we're always like reviewing and doing a deep dive and trying to figure out well like is this the best way or maybe we can improve on it and then you know it always starts this like great collaboration with either a designer architect or other people in the company where we can sit there and really like tear this one little detail apart and figure out like a really cool way or a better way to to accomplish something so i guess like working with you and i guess the rest of the team since it's always kind of been our our goal from the beginning right. and it's you but think never... back to like when you first started you know that that's a learned mindset you know, like we didn't, you know, n n neither myself nor yourself went into this saying, I'm going to question everything we do and try to do the, the very best. I think, you know, in the early days, it's how do we do this and how do we get it done? Yeah. You know, and thinking back to like some of our first jobs, like everything we do, we, we, we always kind of wish we could go backwards. Um, Literally and, every job. Yeah, and redo. You always learn something, right? And it's like, oh man, if I just tweak that just a little bit, and it's like, what do you think? What, what do you think it was that kind of allowed you to feel comfortable to be in a position where you could, you know, question those things? I guess at the beginning, I never knew what the budget was. <laughs> like that's what helped. It was just like there was there's. Uh, You're saying that not knowing actually not, helped. Like it, I I wasn't involved with that side of things, so I didn't know like. You would like maybe loosely tell us how many hours we had to get a job done, but there was never really this conversation of like, hey, we got to get it done by this. It's always like, all right, so you go into it and make sure we're producing our absolute best product mm -hmm. and we'll just figure out the rest of it later. Right. It's funny. I've told, I've told the story, you, you and uh, Cal, who's no longer here, but... Um, you guys were working on that walnut staircase yeah. and I had like a week and a half and I just kept telling you guys, yeah, just get it done. You know, just get it done. Just get it done the best you can. Let's do the best job we can. And sit five or six weeks later, I was like, man, I underestimated that, but I didn't <laughs> underestimate it. I, I, we could have done a, a job in, you know, a week and a half, but I, we didn't, we didn't set out to like we went in there like all right we're gonna oh we're gonna level everything oh we're gonna fix everything yeah. oh we're gonna we're gonna hand you know cut these cut like it became a much more complicated project and you know well, you I, always end up finding something right and it's like it's always in our mindset it's like well this is probably the only time they're gonna have or the, the opportunity to, to fix this issue mm -hmm. so let's just take care of it now and so it's a I mean, so looking back, like, so that's looking back, but now looking forward, you're part of these budget meetings, you're part of the discussion on pricing and time. And what ha has that changed your outlook? 
Uh, not really. It, it's always, you know, we know where we want to be and where we want the company to go to. Mm -hmm. So we always, I mean, we do our best to estimate what it's going to take, but I guess, you know, being um, kind of like ahead of this stuff where we're watching our budgets, we know what's going on and it's a constant open communication with the client. So they understand what they're doing. And then I guess it really helps with us having like, we upload daily logs every day. So the client seeing like, Hey, every single day, boom, 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 this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so as long as you keep that communication open and they understand what you're doing and what the end goal is, it it's, uh, certainly makes it a lot easier. And you say this, you know, open communication, you know, and being upfront, like you're talking about actually communicating with the client where we run Constantly. into something and we, you know, run it by them saying, Hey, yeah. you know, it is going to take more time, thus more money, but this is the way, the right way we'd like to do it. Yeah. And, you know, and, they trust us. Yeah. And I mean, that's, it goes back to selling the job, right? Why they hired us, why, you know, whether they watched a video or listened to a podcast like this. They're, they're hiring us primarily because they know who we are already and they trust our process and they see the work that we put out and, you know, there's that level of confidence in be, behind what we do. Yeah. Um, looking at, you know, projects, you know, as far as like, what, you know, obviously we've grown from a carpentry company to a renovation company and, you know, in new construction and we have more new construction on the horizon this year, which I think is a big part of, you know, people leaving the city or just taking the opportunity to upgrade, um, you know, looking at, you know, what our future holds, what are some of the things that, you know, that you're excited about there as far as like, as our projects grow and, or change, you know, I think what, I guess my question would be, what are you most excited about some of the changes that we have coming? It's being challenged. Yeah. You know, because if you sit there, you go to work every day and you're constantly like doing the same thing. Not that building in Boston is easy or, you know, there's always some crazy thing that pops up, especially these old brownstones. And But it's just the new ones coming down the pipeline are, you know, they're, they're larger, more in depth. And, you know, I get to jump into these projects way ahead of them, what I'm used to. And so it's going to be, you know, really exciting coming up and I get to challenge myself. What do you think about as far as, you know, um, th that learning process as we grow? Because we, as we grow, things change, projects change, scope changes, things like that. Your role has changed in the company. What have been some of the things that you've implemented or uh, considered to make sure that, you know, as your role develops, you're, you're more successful with it? Yeah, I mean, because I guess my background, I was swinging a hammer. And right. that's, you know, as, uh, you know, you kind of like open things up and it's like, hey, you know, start paying attention to this. I get introduced to, you know, working in build a trend and now going through all that stuff and just working or whether it be uh, they have all like the tutorials online to kind of help catch up on that. Um, just recently did the project management course, which that, that helped out to kind of like get the mindset to, of where I guess my, my head needs to be prepping these projects is when you're building it every day, it's like, oh, all right, here's what I got going on for the next week, two weeks, whatever. You kind of have that figured out. But then now once you start, you know, going into more of the well, site supervision or project management, you, you got to be looking like six months down the road. Mm -hmm. So, I what, guess. It, you know, going from carpenter to project manager, because I feel it, it, that's, you know, a, that's a almost a natural progression in, in this industry. In some sense, right? Yeah. There, there are some guys that refrain from doing that, but yeah. a lot of guys work their way from a tool belt to a project manager. And you have the project managers that, that don't have the hands-on. You know, I get first question would be, do you, you know, do you miss the carpentry side of it? One hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Like it, I feel like everybody that's a carpenter, like they always have that passion for yeah. doing it, and so I, I, I love doing it. But then, it's kind of like at first going into this project management, more supervision. It's, it's like learning a, a new sport or a new mm -hmm. skill, right? The first time you go skiing or snowboarding, you're going to fall on your face a hundred times. And then, you know, eventually you pick yourself back up and you keep going and you get, you know, a little bit better. The next time you do it a little bit better. And then eventually you got somewhat figured out. Fun fact, you were a pro snowboarder? No, <laughs> far from. I thought you were pro. <laughs> no. Nah, you can do a backflip. That means pro uh, to me. <laughs> I used to be able to, yeah. Okay. Uh, if you if we went right now, you couldn't do a backflip. 
I think my wife would kill me. <laughs> All right, She's like, don't get do, hurt. Do, can you teach me to do a backflip? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, you say 100% miss it, but you, but you're, you, you're actually enjoying the project management side. Yeah. So it's a, it's a new skill. Like I, like I was, you know, cause your first time doing a new thing, right. It's, it's super challenging mm-hmm. and you kind of like walk away from it almost like a little bit defeated and you're like, all right, but then you go right back after the next time you get a little bit better and you're like, all right, it's starting to become more fun. What do you love about the project management? I love figuring all this stuff out. Yeah. And like being, you know, cause we, I guess we're kind of float that line of like site super slash project managers. So I'm always, you know, doing the best I can to dive in with the guys or Ken and I spend a zillion hours stressing over this like pocket door hardware to figure out the best way to bifold door or whatever. Sure. And uh, working through a lot of the details of, you know, cause sometimes the architects, they draw, you know, this beautiful elevation, but we noticed that like the way the hardware was going to work, it would actually have like a small interference or something like that. And so we're like, all right, how can we do it? We don't want to change it because it looks fantastic. Right. Let's figure out how to get this done. Yeah. And, you know, it's almost, a, it, it's very similar. And I think you, you touched on the fact that P, we're kind of PM superintendent where, you know, our project managers spend a lot of time on site. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we certainly spend time in the office from the, the back end of it. We have great assistant project managers that really help support that, you know, documentation behind the scenes, uh, obviously admin and things like that. But from the project management, you know, it ties to carpentry pretty well where, you know, it's, it is, it's this hands-on approach to figuring things out. And, you know, we, we do our best, we do our absolute best to, to stay away from mediocrity yeah, and accepting mediocrity. And that's something that we, you know, we challenge ourselves. I mean, it puts an enormous amount of stress and pressure on us um but it's something that you know we 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 share that mindset yeah and i think after you know quite a few mistakes we've pretty much figured out that like we've sat there and pondered a thousand different ways to like fix this one thing that we goofed up on and 90 percent of the time it's faster to just bite the bullet rip it out rebuild it and make it right Mm -hmm. and just move on from it so switching gears a little bit What's going on right now? What, where, what do you have for you know your projects? What do you, what are you focused on? So with our projects right now, it's we, I guess I have a project manager that's leaving. We do, yeah. So right now, I'm focused on kind of like bridging the gap between everything they have going on, so we can keep you know clients happy, stay on track, make sure we we get all these projects like through and you know hit our mark with everything and you know see those through to the end and then obviously we got to start prepping because it's not like we can just shut down and be like oh okay you know here's what we have on our plate like I said you got to be looking six months down the road and prepping for the next you right know, project to dive into so in to to kind of dig into <clears throat> you know the the projects that you have going on right now we have project 170 yeah. which is you know one of our bigger renovation projects yeah. going on right now you know, how are you managing that job and what is your, your role really consist of there? And who's your team under that? Yeah, so we got Brian's a assistant project manager under that and he's top notch with the communication and staying on top of all the documentation. So uh, he's, he's doing a fantastic job now where I'm being spread out and he just needs this like tiny little bump to kind of make sure we're trending in the right direction. He's um staying on top of a, a lot of stuff over there so that's a great and luckily a lot of our projects are at the point where like these details are figured out mm-hmm. that one we execution. just execution yeah and we we've like we just passed our um rough inspection finished up insulation now we're going into plaster and so it, it's getting to a point where you know i can scale back my time a little bit Brian has a very good understanding of what we have left to do and where we need to be. Mm-hmm. And he's just seeing it through to the end. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen Brian, he's actually on our IGTV uh, and he walked us through the to do's because that yeah. dude, dude went like, deep into we'll, schedule and to do's. We'll be sitting there for like a PM meeting 
and I'm getting pinged oh, yeah, already with to do's. Nick, and it, you know, Nick it, Schiffer has to do this like, by this boom, date. Boom, boom. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, I mean, I do, but do I really have to have a deadline on that? <laughs> <laughs> but it forces us to get stuff done. It it's does, great. Yeah. Um, it, and then, of course, extremely helpful. You know, Tim, you know, we have uh, Lee Carpenter, Tim on site, Cooper's yeah. on site, and they're helping keeping that production and that carpentry moving forward. Yeah. Um, you know, we're also h- handling Project 174, which yep. is over in the Beacon Hill. Um, and you guys are rolling into trim <laughs> over there. Yeah, just uh-huh. about wrapped up with interior trim. Um, so that, that the guys will be, you know, pulling out of there hopefully next week. And then we get to shift them around to the next job. And yeah. we got the window restoration that's wrapping up right now those will get put back in painters and then wallpaper so that that one again it's in like pretty good standings it's it's down towards the end of that project so yeah. um that one doesn't require a ton of supervision and we have so liz is the assistant on that one and she's helping you know make sure that we don't miss anything on that as well Sure. So as we look into, you know, we're not even going to name all the projects that we're, <laughs> we're talking about today, but as we're looking into some of the, you know, some of these projects that are coming down the pipeline, we talk about it a little bit, but for you, you know, in the success of being a PM, you know, you, you touched upon, upon it, getting involved early, you know, why are, why is that so important to you? Just so you have a better understanding when you go into like day one, you, you start breaking ground and diving into that project. I already know what the, the finished product looks like. Yeah. It's not like a, you know, in the past is more of like the carpenter role. I might see a set of prints a little bit before, but then you're kind of showing up, figuring out as you go. Whereas that one, I already know what the goal is. Mm-hmm. So you can go into it and you're, you're looking at like more, more like holistic approach. And it's, so fu- it, it's funny. It's, you know, it took me a while to, to realize that detail. Um, in, in the detail, what I'm talking about is, getting people involved earlier because i spend months maybe a year looking at print understanding the job pricing it talking about it scoping it in you know and in the past haven't had a really haven't had a real clean handoff to say you where it's been like all right here's the job we're start you know we're planning to start it in a month and it's like Great. All right, what well, are we building? Yeah, what are we building? <laughs> what what are the, the what's the information? And getting you know PM involved early is great because we're working on it together and we're building it in our head together. And I think I I for a long time forgot that I was building this thing in my head. So when I handed it off and it was and we would run into issues early on, I was like, what? Well, I don't get it. Like this is how do we miss that? Yeah, how do we miss it? And it's because because I didn't give the necessary time, and that trickles down to. APM and the lead carpenter, even the carp, even the carpenters in the field, and you know the tri- most of the trades at this point know about it. But having that opportunity to really dissect these drawings early on, or the scope of the project early on, allows them allows tremendous feedback from the entire team. But also, everyone has the opportunity to build this thing in their head. Yeah. And you know that you know I do. I think about all of the. Um, not failure, the learning opportunities that we've had in the sense of they've really re- resolve, uh, revolved around planning and, and having the necessary time to, you know, absorb that information. Yeah, because it's not like you, you can't just scan over the prints of what we're doing mm-hmm. and digest it fully one time, two times, three times. I mean, there there's times where I'll even look at a print now and be like, oh man, look at that. I didn't realize that, you know, this ceiling lined up with the top of the fridge panel over here or like whatever this small detail was. Right. And he's like, you pick up on it. It's like the 10th, 15th, 20th. I don't even know the time looking at these plans. It's like, oh, that makes so much sense now. All right. right. Yeah, that's how we get that to work. And it's like, and of course, it's the same thing with like the architects and you. You guys are like, super involved at the beginning of it getting it all built out and they're like how'd you miss that right i'm sorry (laughs) well it is i mean i I think about i think it's uh project 152 the the primary suite renovation i mean that one there was an enormous amount of detail in it to the point where we were finishing the job still seeing things that were you know called out um and i mean it was you know we same thing it's like we look back and it's like man like we we nailed it but there's so many uh, things that we could have approached differently or done differently or you know accomplished in a different way and i mean i think that goes back to what you said right in the beginning is like always challenging ourselves to improve yeah 
It's every single job. When we get done with it, I don't care what we did. There's always something you can improve on. What, you know, for any architect or designer that's listening, what, you know, what are some of the things that you've learned along the way that have made your job easier from their perspective? Uh, I get, well, as far as like the planning stage, I like being involved with the architects because we have a very good understanding of how to build everything. Mm -hmm. So when we get a chance to work with architects earlier on, we might be able to catch something, you know, sooner. Right. And so with our, our brains, we're like, oh, wait, we got to frame this and the header's got to be there. And okay, oh, wait, that's not going to work. We got to, you know, shift this, this, and this. So that's, uh, I think, super, super helpful. Yeah, and that's yeah. a big reason why we implement this pre-construction phase of, yeah. you know, our process. It's, you know, getting getting you involved, getting the team involved early on with the design allows us to help navigate that process, you know, to, you know, to completion. Yeah. Um, I got one more question for you. Out of the four and a half years that you've been here, what has been your favorite project? Ooh, that's a tough one. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to like pick a project. Sure, or maybe because right? then you go of, back to like the first one. Aspect of a project. Like I had a really fun time building the stairs on a project we did in the South End, the uh, was that Worcester Street. Worcester Street, yeah. But then the That's last funny. time, I, but yeah. then the last time I got to install a kitchen was the one we did over on East Concord in the South End. Yeah, and I got the that that was like a time I actually got to work with Ken. Yeah, right back to the beginning because it was really it was us, and then we had like Tanner was still here, and uh, who was in the shop? Was that right when James? Um, is it? I think James may have started then. Yeah, he was involved with that project. Yeah, yeah. I mean that but was that was like there's only the first time that was like one of our first full cabinet projects, full kitchen cabinet projects. Yeah. And I, we laughed because it's like and you did curved cabinetry for your first kitchen. <laughs> we were like, yeah, we did. But that's a, like I don't think field carpenters have really had the opportunity to jump in on a cabinetry install. Right. Until like recently. I think Patrick jumped in and helped out. But like that was the last time we did that. Like that was a lot of fun figuring out all it's funny. Two of your two of your favorite projects are uh, when you were in the carpentry position. Yeah, well, I just like started being a project manager, if you will, because yeah. like I was site super for a while. Yeah, and I'm not judging. I'm well, just saying. I'm just like, saying like the, we gotta we gotta nail something. So you're you you get this new favorite. And, yeah, and, you know, being but a, then but I can literally go down the entire list because it's like I. I might as well have moved in when we were building the one in Newton. I yeah. got to live there for a year and a half. Luckily, the clients didn't kick me out. It was great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I but mean, like it, the the amount of time I had on that job, it's like that one was always. That, that was I like mean, the that was large, your growth. That's yeah, where you you know you that's grew. where it started to blast off, and then but then you can go all the way back to like the first one, like milling up all the reclaimed, like the the tabletop that we did, and the floating desk and stuff for um, oh, A yeah, Street. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, the hexagon exactly of wood. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's 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 funny. I you know, I forget. Um, oh, it was the other. It was actually yesterday, I think. And I was thinking about uh, when I started this company and some of the projects I did in the beginning, and um, I don't remember how far into the business I was. It was early, but you know, I did. A kitchen project i did a whole home renovation i did this curved deck then i did another home renovation after an ice dam uh issue and then i went and did vinyl siding on this house and i think i was thinking about that vinyl siding job and it's like i just i i was taking everything it was me and you know my trailer and i was doing any project that came across my board and i never installed vinyl siding before I had never bent metal. I went and bought an aluminum brake, and, and I spent way too much time there. It was just me. And it's like, I think about all, like, and that wasn't that long ago. I mean, we, you know, I think we're in our seventh year of business. And it's like, and to think that, you know, let's was call that it. Was that like year six or like six years ago or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I think like even six, if five. it was six years ago, like it was me, it was <clears> just <throat> me installing vinyl siding on a house that's, you know, 40 minutes south of here. Yeah. And it's, you know, just to 
to think that we've we've progressed and no, you know i'm trying and, to think what was i doing six years ago I, I mean we used to do just there was always like small yeah. and like you said it would like take on whatever right you jump in and like doing rot repair on doors yeah i mean that was even before that was even before i had chris and brian yeah. my my two friends that came and joined I th- i'm pretty sh- yeah i mean i'm 99 percent sure i was by myself on that job and it's <laughs> clicking vinyl together clicking fighting vinyl the together, thing the whole time you know and then i think you know we had bought our our property and did that renovation on it I mean, that was shortly into starting my business, and it was a huge risk. I think I was doing that at the same time. Maybe you got on. Yeah, um, you were. You had just started when I was putting my kitchen in. Yeah, because yep. you, you, you we were grac- graciously helped me get that kitchen installed. I think it was the day of the party. <laughs> yeah, I was there. Well, yeah, I think it was the day of because we went. I was like, Mike, I need to get the, the crown molding on. Tell your wife to meet you here for the Christmas party. Let's go. <laughs> I've like borderline slept there. I think I was. I remember setting like the dishwasher panel, and it was like get it all done. It was yeah. like, definitely wasn't a hundred percent, but it was like, hey, it looks pretty good. It's just fun. It's it's fun to reflect back on things, and it it's you know I'm um, ma- massively thankful for you being part of this, and you know for the last four and a half years, and uh, I'm excited to see like each and every year as we grow. Yeah. And, you know, to, to see you grow as an individual and see the company grow, you know, because of, you know, all of our labor into this, um, you know, uh, I got to throw it back to you. What's your favorite project? Can you pick one? It's hard. You know, I, can't I, pick I wasn't one. expecting you to throw it back at me. My favorite project. If I had to pick one as a whole, maybe it was a the large renovation at noon. Cause we got the chance to yeah, literally. I, do everything because yeah. we're renovating part of the house plus putting the big addition on and tying it all together so you got the yeah i could i can't answer it because i think for i i liked then, almost all of them for very different reasons yeah it's if you had to pick one i know it's so hard you're right all right well we're, we're gonna tease everyone with the podcast that mike reveals his favorite podcast just so they listen to the whole yeah, thing. I don't give it away. <laughs> guys we appreciate you listening we'll talk to you guys next week uh, if you guys want to follow Mike, he is at Mike.Hume, uh, project manager here at NS Builders. I'm at NS Builders. We'll see you guys next week. Make sure you are checking out um, the week's episodes of Site Visit. That's usually when I'm touring uh, Mike's jobs and revealed when Ken is showing you guys a behind the scenes of what's going on in the shop. And that's pretty much it. That's it. it. I thought I was going to have something else. We'll see you guys next week.